Now we are going to look at three major applications for BPHE technology. District heating or heat networks is one of the fastest growing areas in energy production. The main motivator is to decarbonize our cities. The first European district heating system was installed in Germany in about 1921. It was a direct system. In the 1950s, block station technology was introduced, and in the 1980s, the energy transfer stations were moved from serving a cluster of buildings to building level substations. Today, building level substations are combined with tap water stations in each apartment, sometimes with hybrid heat sources and a mixture of district heating, solar power, and heat pumps. Each step in the technology has been driven by life cycle costs, energy savings, and efficiency, particularly as budgets have shrunk and oil, gas, and coal prices have risen. In the most recent development, the most cost-efficient and smaller BPHEs have been used to build apartment-level subscriber stations. District heating has some technical subsegments. Building-level substations can be divided into radiator heating, floor heating, and tap water heating. This is the European standard. Head stations, or block stations, are common in Russia and China. The heat exchanger serves as a pressure breaker between the plant and the substations in residential or industrial buildings. Storage tank systems can be divided into freshwater stations and tap water stations. Freshwater stations are centralized units that prepare tap water for bigger public buildings. They are typically installed in basements. Tap water stations are decentralized units, with a BPHE being used for tap water heating. For space heating, the BPHE is bypassed. A substation has three principal parts. First, equipment to receive, control, and transfer heat from the plant side to the building side. Second, equipment to receive and distribute water at the correct temperature from and to the radiators in the building. Finally, equipment to receive, control, and distribute hot water in a radiator or floor heating system with a pump circulating the water in the system. The radiators heat each room. Pipes convey the water to and from the radiators. Valves control the flow to ensure every part of the system receives the flow necessary to achieve the desired room temperature. Expansion vessels compensate for the volume changes induced by temperature changes in the system. An expansion tank should be placed on the hot side of the radiator BPHE, applying Henry's law. In tap water heating design, specifications vary widely depending on the area and heating source. The heat load can range from 20 to 500 kilowatts. The supply temperatures can vary between 50 and 90 degrees Celsius and return temperatures between 20 and 60 degrees Celsius. The tap water circuit can vary between 10 and 45 to 65 degrees Celsius. District cooling is often combined with district heating. It has several sub-segments including district cooling pressure breakers, ice storage, and free cooling.
Heat pumps are common heat sources in district heating. The heat pump uses the refrigerant cycle to upgrade free heat at low temperatures to useful heat at higher temperatures. This environmentally friendly heating solution is a growing market. Heat pumps use stored heat that is replenished by the sun. A heat pump can be used to provide space heating and domestic hot water. When running in a reverse mode, it can also provide cooling in the summer. The common refrigerant cycle is used, and the condensation energy is utilized to heat the water used for space heating, as you can see in this picture. There are two types of heat pumps, ground to water and air to water. The ground source heat pump utilizes the energy from the ground through a drilled hole or a brine collector, while the air to water heat pump utilizes ambient heat as the energy source.